When it comes to lighting fixtures and control systems, lighting designers have never had as many choices as they do today. With so many options in moving lights, media servers, console architectures, and laser systems, stage shows are as varied and creative as ever and require moving more data between front of house and the rig than ever before. A solid show network is as important as solid power distribution for many shows. In this video, we'll take a look at how to start from a sample equipment plot using Capture and design a network that will support the equipment and protocols we need to execute the design vision. The first stage of designing a network is to examine the devices we have and look at what sort of data each needs to send or receive. A production might use IP networking to handle lighting, audio, video, laser, and automation data. We'll be focusing on lighting data, but later we'll take a look at how these different types of data can coexist on the same network. Looking at the fixture list in our capture file, we'll see that this rig uses 10 Clay Packy Alita Wash K20s, 8 ADB Lighting Technologies ALC4 Psych Lights, 10 Clay Packy Alpha Spot QWO 800s, 24 Roby Robin MMX Spots, 24 Roby Robin MMX Wash Beams, 8 X Laser Skyrider HPX M5s, and 1 Avalites Q3 Media Server. With this equipment list in hand, we need to figure out what our connectivity options are for each of these systems. We can learn this by searching for the manuals and data sheets of these fixtures. As an example, I haven't worked with the Alita Wash K20s before, so I just Google a fixture, which takes me to the Clay Packy website, which has a data sheet on the unit. If I look at the control section, I can see that the fixture is compatible with DMX as well as ArtNet, but not streaming ACM. I can also see how many parameters this fixture requires in its different modes. Once we determine what our connectivity options are for the fixtures and our parameter count requirements, I can determine what I need for a console to control it all. Our total parameter count for these fixtures is 2,884. While it's a large number, it's not an unusually high number for a show with many moving fixtures and is well within the control capabilities of all the major console brands. Since a universe is 512 parameters and 2,884 divided by 512 is 5.6, we need a minimum of six universes, which is no big deal for a modern lighting network. We could run this show on our Avalites Quartz, which provides for 16 universes with no problem. But for the purposes of showing what a festival or arena-sized lighting network may look like, we're going to use an Avalites Arena with the Quartz as a backup at front of house, then a TNP processing unit and an optical Titan Net switch unit backstage. Immediately with a system like this, we can see the benefits of a lighting network over just using straight DMX. By networking the consoles together, we have immediate failover support in case one console were to go down during our show, or if we wanted the consoles to perform different jobs, such as one console running lights while the other ran the media server and lasers, all on the same network. Our Avalites Arena console has a built-in gigabit fiber optic connection, which allows us to run a single fiber optic cable to the Titan Net switch backstage instead of having to run six different runs of 5-pin DMX cable. Fewer cables means faster load in, load out, and less space taken up in the truck. Is the gigabit connection fast enough for what we want to do, though? It's important to make sure that our network has plenty of bandwidth for the data we're trying to send. Remember before broadband internet was common and you used to have to wait for videos to buffer and images to slowly load when web browsing? This was due to not having enough bandwidth, the ability to move data at high speed. Let's learn a little bit about what our systems require and then specify our lighting network to make sure we have enough bandwidth. Commonly, network speeds are given in bits per second, but we often talk about data in terms of bytes. One byte is eight bits, so our network bandwidth in bytes per second is one eighth of the bandwidth in bits per second. On a lighting network, the main data streams we need to consider are streaming ACN and ARTNET. Streaming ACN generates 680 bytes of information per packet, plus 20 bytes of framing, times 8 bits per byte, times 40 packets per second, for a total of 224 kilobits per second. ARTNET data generates 572 bytes per packet, plus 20 bytes of framing, times 8 bits per byte times 40 packets per second equals 190 kilobits per second. To learn more about what goes into each one of these packets, check out the first part of this video series. To provide a safe margin for our data, we'll round up to 250 kilobits per universe. So our six universes require a total of one and a half megabits per second bandwidth between front of house and the stage. We can accommodate a lot of DMX data on even a 100 megabit link, and we'll have 10 times that bandwidth with our gigabit link. In best practice, a lighting network should never be used for anything but lighting data. But just in case you have to share, it's important to know what bandwidth might be taken up by other departments. Audio or video data will consume much larger amounts of bandwidth. Uncompressed 24-bit audio at 48 kHz will consume 1.2 megabits per channel. 
and a single compressed video stream can consume 20 to 250 megabits depending on the frame rate and the resolution. If over the same gigabit connection you're using for your lighting network, someone is trying to stream four 4K 60 frame per second video streams, suddenly your gigabit connection isn't enough and you may begin experiencing lag. Now that we know our gigabit connection from front of house has plenty of bandwidth for our lighting data, let's look at how to patch and physically connect our fixtures. Some of our rig uses fixtures that require 5-pin DMX. We could run a bunch of DMX lines from front of house to the stage, but we can simplify our load in and provide more flexibility in our rig by using DMX nodes. A DMX node can be as simple as a device that takes in ArtNet or streaming ACN and converts that data stream to a single DMX universe, or they can be complex multi-universe systems with built-in processing. Our TNP is a very advanced node that is capable of doing additional processing as well as taking our ArtNet and streaming ACN data streams and converting them to 5-pin DMX. In this setup, we're using it with the optical switch as a DMX node to convert our network data streams over the fiber optic cable from front of house to CopperCat 5 cables for our ArtNet fixtures and Copper DMX cables for our DMX only fixtures. We'll split up our fixtures based on three factors. How many parameters do we need to control each of them? Each universe provides up to 512 channels. With sophisticated fixtures like Mercury-enabled lasers or the K20s in pixel mapping mode, we may run out of parameters on a universe quite quickly. How many physical devices we have? As a rule, we should not have more than 32 physical devices on a DMX run. We can use a DMX splitter to expand this number, or we can use additional DMX nodes to give us the required physical runs to meet our needs. All multi-port DMX nodes we're aware of will allow you to set them to output the same universe on multiple DMX ports. And how those fixtures are distributed. Because DMX devices must be strictly daisy-chained, it can be difficult to find a way to link up large arrays of fixtures without cumbersome cable runs. Looking at our rig and capture, we can see that our fixtures that must be operated by DMX are located at the base of our psych and on our sidelight towers. For the fixtures at the base of the psych, we can run one line of DMX out from our TNP offstage left along the back of the stage to chain these fixtures. For the alpha spots on our side light towers, we have two options. We can either run a DMX line from our TNP to the stage left tower, then chain to the stage right tower, or we can run ethernet cable to each of these towers and use a node at each tower. Conveniently, the X-Laser Skywriters at the top of each tower have built into them a node functionality. We can have each of these output Universe 2 on each tower, so we can run Ethernet cable to the lasers, then take DMX output from the lasers down the towers to control the alpha spots. Since we have to run Ethernet for the lasers anyway, it keeps it very simple. All the rest of our fixtures can be controlled by ArtNet, so let's take a look at the simplest way to run Ethernet cables for those. One thing you may notice when looking at data sheets and manuals is that some fixtures have multiple Ethernet ports for chaining fixtures, but some others don't these multi-port fixtures have a device called a switch integrated. We'll get into the differences between hubs, switches, and routers in another video, but for this portion, all you need to know is that the switch repeats relevant network data to connected devices and allows you to chain ArtNet and streaming ACN devices. When the fixtures don't have a switch built in, we have to figure out another way of getting the network signal to each fixture independently. We can do this with a standalone switch. Switches for lighting networks are often rack mount and work well for ground packages, but are often impractical for mounting in the truss. In the case of our demo capture file here, our better bet is to just run DMX for these fixtures. Even though they have ArtNet capability, using that capability with these fixtures in this arrangement is impractical. For the sake of convenience, each flown segment has its own DMX universe, and we can either home run a DMX cable, or we can place a DMX node to convert ArtNet from an Ethernet cable to DMX for these fixtures. The X lasers on the rear truss can all be controlled by DMX, ArtNet, or streaming ACN. Since they have integrated switches, we can just chain them all together and put them on their own universe. So let's review our capture file and take a look at our universes and what we're going to run, whether it's ArtNet, streaming ACN, or DMX for each universe. So we know that the Alita Wash K20s have ArtNet capability, but they don't have an integrated switch. So we probably don't want to put a switch up in the truss up here with them. We'll probably want to run those directly by DMX. Also on that universe, we're putting the ALC4s down here at the base of the psych. So we can just run a single 5-pin DMX line from our TNP to each one of these ALC4s, chaining them, then running a single line up from the last item in the chain down here, up to our top truss for these Alita Wash K20s. That'll be universe zero. Our next universe is going to be all of the alpha spots on the sides. And you'll see that they're split up so that I've got five on one side, five on the other, but we intend to use the Skywriters as nodes for those. 
So that's no big deal. We're going to run an Ethernet from our switch to our Skywriters. And then from the Skywriters, we're going to run 5-pin DMX down each of the columns. That'll allow us to do Universe 1 across both of these different towers. Universe 2 is going to be this first truss stick that's flown right here. And we'll go ahead and break that up so that we have Universe 2, Universe 3, Universe 4, and Universe 5. That'll keep our cable run simple because we can just go with a single 5-pin DMX from the TNP up into the grid, down to the truss, and then we'll just run a single line for each one of the truss pieces. So Universe 6 is going to be all of our Skywriters here. Now they're broken up into three different locations, one at the top of each tower, and then six across this back truss here. Because these are all being run by streaming ACN, that's very simple. We can go ahead and just run Ethernet here and here, which we're doing anyway in order to be able to use them as nodes for these towers, and a separate Ethernet cable to this truss here. Because these fixtures have built-in switches, we can just chain the Ethernet from system to system to system to system, and that's the end of it. Now that we know what fixtures we're running by Artnet, Streaming ACN, and DMX, we should decide on an IP addressing scheme. While we could use automatic addressing with a DHCP server on the network, many show networks still use static IP addresses. One important thing to check is if the fixture has any limitations on the IP address settings. In the case of the Xlaser and Clay Packy systems, there are no limitations, but the Roby Robin units will only function on a 2 dot or 10 dot network. Since of those two options, 10 dot is the only private network option, we'll need to address all our systems to be on the 10 dot network with a subnet mask of 255.0.0.0. This gives us plenty of IP addresses, and we can use the last three segments of the IP address to split our devices into different ranges, while still allowing all of them to communicate. We can put our lighting control systems into the 10.1 range, our media servers into the 10.2 range, and we can break up our other devices by their location. Maybe we use 10.101 for the one section of truss, 10.102 for another section, and so on. Once we have everything hooked up, turned on, and assigned an IP address, we're ready to start configuring our networked fixtures and nodes for either Artnet or Streaming ACN. For Streaming ACN, we only need to configure the console to send whatever universes we need and set the corresponding universe on each receiving device. The receiving devices will join the correct multicast group for each universe they need to receive. In order to use Artnet, there's some extra configuration involved. Artnet can be either unicast or broadcast. Ideally, we want to unicast all of our Artnet universes only to the devices that want them, so we have to tell our console which universes should be sent to which IP addresses. Our console will check the network and try to discover all Artnet devices and should list those devices in the universes they want to receive. Some consoles can then automatically begin transmitting the requested universes to the detected devices, or we can manually assign universes to devices. Console configuration for your outputs is different between all the major brands, but each of them has excellent documentation and video support on how to do this. There's a lot more that goes into the difference between Artnet and Streaming ACN, but we'll get in depth on that with another video. So there it is. We learned how to design and specify our network to make sure we have the bandwidth we need, how to arrange and physically connect the components of our lighting network, and configure your fixtures for proper connectivity. In the final part of this series, we'll cover basic troubleshooting and how to verify that your network is set up properly and your console is sending lighting network data. Thanks for watching.